to Let's Scare Adam. This is episode three. I am your host, J. Luke, aka Josh. I am joined by our most esteemed guest, Adam. How are you doing, Adam? Yeah, I'm doing really well, Josh. How about yourself? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good, mate. Uh, you can follow us on Letterboxd at King Frogby for Adam and J. Luke for myself. You can follow us on Instagram at films underscore cool podcast. And Let's Scare Adam is the show where I, a horror film veteran, get Adam, who is not the biggest fan of horror, to watch horror films. Can I just say, such a better week this week than Evil Dead. Fantastic comparison. I imagine it would have been. I imagine it would have been. Uh, This week we watched The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which was directed by Toby Hooper. It was released in 1974. It had a budget of eighty to one hundred forty thousand dollars, and it made thirty uh, about thirty one million at the box office. So, just for inflation, that's around seven hundred grand for the budget and approximately one hundred fifty mil at the box office. So, we're that's looking nice at profit. yeah, we're looking at one of the classics here. So, I guess we'll start off with what did we think? It was good. Uh, it wasn't the best horror film like it like in terms of scares i would say that um it didn't really get me that much uh there were i think that Mm -hmm. terrifying yes uh jump scares is probably what i realized is where i tend to freak out and have my moments Mm -hmm. not too many of those this time no and i think that when you look at this film and when you watch this film in 2020 you really have to put it into the context in which it was made to understand why it's scary because don't get me wrong this is this is sort of one of those real deep sort of it's a real fucked up movie like there's some real horrific imagery and everything in it and being released in 1974 i can't imagine another film that happened before this that sort of went this just straight up dark yeah yeah because i think this this may have been before the exorcist i think it was i think the exorcist was the late 70s um okay. the only thing i can think of in the 60s that might have come close is say uh george a romero's night of the living dead but compared to this it's i wouldn't say it's anything yeah um when did the, the first evil dead come out uh, that was 1980, I believe. Oh, yeah, or 1981. Yeah, 1981. Wow, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and Halloween wasn't even out at this point. Okay. So, this is... And that's why I guess this one was so influential because it was sort of the precursor to the slasher genre. You have, like, the big hulking killer and you have, like, a group of teens to youths for him to chase down. Um... Where Halloween laid sort of the the format for your standard slasher in terms of almost everything, this one sort of influenced it a lot in that sense, in the, in the killer, the sort of how... It's sort of a relentless movie, I found, and that's sort of what you get in Halloween too. But I think with this one, it's... What puts it out of the slasher genre for me is the fact that it's not so much Leatherface that's even the villain of this mm. he's just like sort of a member of a really fucked up family, family. yeah yeah and I, I know you wouldn't have um, seen them but as much as this is a slasher I think this is more in turn more of an inspiration on that sort of horror film the like cannibal hillbilly sort of one like you may have heard of films uh, like The Hills Have Eyes or Rob Zombie's whole film catalogue sort of fits this genre completely so very yeah. influential on a lot of areas yeah so I'd say that like so I don't have any reference for those movies like I've heard of them but obviously have steered well clear of them um, yeah so like I guess I think the thing that I struggled with the most is obviously it's 1974 so the acting um, wasn't super fantastic um and I, I would say it felt, rather than bad, it may have felt amateur. Yeah, yeah. And because I've seen some bad 70s movies, and this is 
by no means the worst acting for the 70s. It's just... In a movie this good, I guess you'd say, like, everything around it is so well-crafted, it just sticks out a little bit. Mm. I'd say that... The... Like, it was terrifying, uh, like, obviously, Leatherface. Um, I, I guess, like, just... Like, obviously, most actors do unrealistic things throughout horror films. Um, I felt like there was probably a disproportionate amount of silly things. But, I like, at the same time, like, I understand that this is, like, one of the first ones. Um, and what I'm referring to is the scene where they pick up the hitchhiker who is clearly psychotic and they don't just instantly kick him out, I think, was a bit jarring. And then not all, like, also, like, they didn't, like, drive off on him really quickly. They kind of just, like, drove it maybe one meter a second. Um, Can... I'll just say this. And this is me playing devil's advocate here. Okay. We are not from the 70s. Let's put that out there. Yes. We have grown up in a culture where hitchhiking is very much frowned upon. That is true. That was in the 70s. And... But... So, like, my issue is not the hitchhiking. My issue is, yeah. like, Who the guy is clearly psychotic when he cuts himself, and they don't instantly go, all right, we think we might just let you go out here. They go... Sure. They just, like, leave him in the car for, like, an extra 10 minutes. And, like, it's just a... Like, it's a slow start. Um, it is a slow start. Oh, But what... It is a slow start, and it's one of those movies that once it hits its gear, it doesn't really stop. That's but true. until it does, it's all build. And I don't think it has the strongest build compared to a lot of other horror films that we've seen. Yeah, so, so I guess like just to talk about the other parts that I struggled with, and then I'll jump into what I really liked about it. Um, mm-hmm. The other part that I struggled with was the ending was a li- like not the not the final like the very ending the bit with the the rest of the family inside the house mm-hmm. and what appears to be an alive dead grandpa who's like i yep. that that's horrific sure but that's where it broke the level of reality reality almost. yeah um it's sort of like a vampire-ish situation that's happening I, like i don't so there's like a episode of uh adam reacts and I end the clip where, um, which was probably the last thing which I was just confused about, where they cut the lady's finger open, stick it inside the guy, and he sucks the blood out. And I'm like, well, this is just getting a bit yeah. hor- like, gory, a horny, like, Corey, horny? A bit horny, yeah. 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 Um, so, yeah, so I think that those were the, like, for, for the most part, everything else was pretty, like, made sense and sort of fit into it. What I will say, I think the movie excels at, um, sound design. Oh, amazing. It is a disgusting sounding film. And yep. I mean that in the best possible way. I I wrote in my review that this movie achieves its horror through horrific imagery and disgusting sounds. Because that's... It's a very uneasy feeling movie, regardless of if you're being scared or not. You're never, you're never like, oh yeah, can't wait to see what happens next. It's always like, oh, ugh. And I can get why people would be a little bit terrified of like going like I, I I've seen Especially reactions to this in the seventies where people like go out to like country towns and like yeah like I reckon that there would be some crazy people out in the country who do like I, I could see this as a real thing happening yeah hundred percent like this wasn't so far out of reality so actually I should touch on that this was marketed as being based on a true story when it came out just to fuck you up even more in the 70s at the start of the film with the rolling the yeah so the reality so there is some truth behind that but it's the most like for them to say it's a true story is the biggest con job ever Ed Gain was a serial killer who I believe was known for maybe cutting the skin off his victims. They just were like, yeah, it's based on this guy, but everything okay. else is fiction. Nothing. There was a serial killer that they were like, yeah, you're the inspiration for this movie. Let's say it was based on a true story, but it wasn't his story at all. So, what was their motive? Whose? The families. Was it just that they wanted to eat them? I, so I think they were cannibals, but I think 
what also makes this sort of film scary, especially for the 70s, is back in the 70s, police work and everything was all motive. Like, if you didn't have a motive, that was nothing. So if you take away the motive and people are killing for no reason, that heightens the terror for some people. Gotcha. Okay. Mm. So I would also like to mention that this was banned in several countries on release because of the violent nature of it. And the gore is still pretty decent. I mean, there's not too many shots of it, I didn't feel. No. There but... is one particularly bad shot. Which one was that? Uh, the second or third guy... or the Maybe it was the first guy who gets killed. They do this bit with the chainsaw and they're clearly not chainsawing into the guy yeah. and the blood splats and then it cuts really quick. I thought the good one was when Leatherface accidentally chainsawed his own leg. I thought that was a pretty good shot for the 70s. Yep. And the best shot of the movie, and it's not too gory, is where the brother gets run over by the truck. At yes, the very end. at the very end. Oh, actually, I take that back. That's the best like shot of violence in the film the best shot of the film in my opinion is the last shot where she's covered in blood being driven away in the back of the truck back of the truck yeah yeah um yeah i don't know if i have uh, like i i have like other like nitpicky things um i well like we definitely got the cliche of the final girl um, we did started it because this would have been one of the first final girls yeah i can imagine <laughs> um the the thing that annoyed me the most about that character was just the screaming. Yeah, but again, that added another trope to the whole the final girl's got to have a good scream. Yeah. Yep. I just feel like there I... were lots of ways to get <laughs> out of this situation. He was a massive, massive prick to a disabled brother who was Wasn't the entire she? time... He, the entire time, the only dude who knew... He was like... Let's get the fuck out of here. And she was like, no, 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 they're fine. And he's like, no, 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 let's go. And she's like, all right, give me the flashlight. I'm going to leave you on your own and walk off and go and find them. Yeah, I also felt like he was a pretty disposable character. I think a lot of them were disposable <laughs> characters. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, all yeah. of them were. I think that that was like maybe the premise is that they were all just... Mm. I think Toby picked right with who he picked to be the final girl though as i do think she was the most able actor out of all of the cast yeah yeah i could see that anyway i think we'll leave it there for this one yep i i enjoy i enjoy this movie the more i think about it the more i realize that it may have been better than i thought it was when i was watching it but we have to base it on how it feels when we watch it though so options for next week I haven't really given you any well I think we should be we should do what's your shirt Hall we could do Halloween but I don't think that's good for a let's scare Adam because I don't think it'll scare you if this didn't scare you I don't think that will oh okay because Halloween is one of those movies where it's like the thing it's perfectly made and it's just a great great watch but it's just not going to ski. All right, all right. Go for something movies. else then. I don't really so, want to, but it sounds like Halloween <laughs> sounds pretty nice to me then. <laughs> no, I reckon you should just watch Halloween in your own time because you really enjoy it. But, and I really don't want to use my second favorite movie of all time as a let's scare Adam. Okay. But That's on fair. that note, I will give you two options this week. Uh, you can have the re option of watching Wreck which is the Spanish found footage horror movie about the quarantine situation. Mm -hmm. Or, I've just saw this when we were watching it, we can watch Rob Zombie's first horror film, and I believe it's called House of a Thousand Corpses, which I've never seen. I'm going to go... Putting him on the spot here. I'm going to go wreck. <laughs> um, you might have gone the scarier one. I think you may have gone the scarier one, which is I'm all for. Okay. I haven't right. seen either. Oh, so okay. this will be an interesting one for both of us. Sounds good. Well, this has been Let's Scare Adam. And you can check out our other podcast, which is called Film School, which uh, airs on a Wednesday on all good podcast services. Thanks so much for listening, guys. Thank you.